Long distance get home bag. Guys, the get home bag is my primary bag that I keep in my vehicle. You know, it's typically about a three day bag and really in the general area of where I travel on a regular basis. It just gives me enough supplies to be able to get home even if it takes up to about three days. Uh, and you know, really I pack this out with a lot of survival stuff, but honestly, you know, really planning it out that if I was at that farthest distance, how long it would take me, uh, you know, I haven't really planned all that out. Uh, but so today we're going to take a look, though, at if you're on vacation, if you're on a business trip halfway across the country, or if you're a truck driver. Now, what really inspired this whole thing was one of our Patreon members is a truck driver, and he posed the question. He said, sometimes I'm a long distance from home. Could I do a video talking about a lot of the things you would need to get from point A to point B, which is home? One of the first things, though, guys, that you need to do is make a plan. You know, again, it's not just a bunch of random survival stuff in your bag. You've got to have some ideas about how long it might take you. Uh, for us, we're going on vacation next week. It's a couple of hundred miles. I, I looked it up on Google Maps, which Google Maps is an excellent tool to figure out and plan your trip ahead of time. We're just on the coast of South Carolina, so we're still in the same state. According to Google Maps, it'll take me three days and 16 hours to walk home. Now, average walking speed is three to four miles per hour. But that doesn't include sleep, doesn't include breaks, rest, eating, the time it takes uh, that you're not going to be walking. So, honestly, it's more like a week. Do I have enough supplies to last me for a week? And, you know, what kind of uh, area am I going through? Do I have maps? Because really, let's face it, guys, the real problem here would be an EMP. EMP happens, you don't have any communications, you know, you don't have the internet, you don't have Google Maps. And so you really need to plan out your trip ahead of time. If you're planning on going on a trip anytime this year, go ahead and plan it out, see how long it takes you, and then figure out how long it would take you to get home on foot. Now, if you're using a bicycle, which is also on Google Maps, and guys, all of these different data points are on Google, uh, you can, a bicycle will take one day and 12 hours for me to get home. But here's the other side of it. Uh, if I'm on vacation with my family, then I'm gonna be traveling with my family, which is gonna take a longer time. So, you know, you really have to think things through before you plan out a legitimate get home bag from a distance. Yes, again, I can throw all kind of survival items in there and have all kind of stuff. But if I don't really have a plan and really consider food, because that's going to be a big one, it's going to be really difficult to get home. So guys, while bug out bags are not my primary plan, uh, what we're going to talk about here applies to a bug out bag. And guys, wherever your destination is, and that's one of the most important things about bugging out is having a destination, is to go ahead and plan that out. And then, you know, the bag that you're going to use for your get home bag for, for long distance would be the same kind of setup you would use as a bug out bag to get you out of Dodge. Now guys, once you get your time distance down, uh, you know, there are some considerations as far as traveling. Uh, so definitely you want to have some paper maps. We'll look at that in a minute. Uh, paper maps are invaluable when it comes to travel, especially if you have no GPS. But one of the things about a map is you can check different points that are going to come in between you and your destination. Uh, of course, cities or uh, large towns. You know, right at first, it's probably not going to be as important. But after a couple of days, you're going to probably want to avoid highly populated areas. Now, people are going to start getting desperate and start to panic. And so you could become a target, especially if you have a large pack on your back. And so really traveling at night would probably be one of the best options. Of course, traveling at night has its own dangers and, you know, having flashlights to be able to see, uh, but that's also a beacon and it makes you a target. Uh, also, you have to think about bridges and rivers, how to get across them. Uh, one of the problems with a bridge is it's a fatal funnel. Uh, it can be blockaded. It can be blocked. And trying to swim across a river with a really heavy pack on your back is not really an option unless you have a boat or some way to get across. Uh, and, of course, finding out where fords are, where you can get across. Looking through those choke points, uh, whether it's a bridge, whether it's a highly populated area, uh, whether it's a giant ravine, you know, <laughs> getting across those places 
and being able to get home and having that kind of planned out so you know ahead of time how you can detour and it's going to save you a lot of time in the long run. Now guys, we're going to be showing a lot of gear, but that doesn't mean that I recommend you putting all that gear in your bag. You need to craft your bag to suit you, to your preferences. But one of the big things is, is to plan it out. Uh, one thing I noticed in the comments with the live stream is that some people were just like, well, that's just way too much. I can't do all that. What? And, you know, that may be the case. Uh, one thing could be is you have slow mobility. Uh, you know, maybe you have some knee problems, hip problems, and you're going to be really slow on the go, uh, maybe down to one to two miles an hour. And you need to factor that in. But here's the thing, guys, and this is the bottom line. Uh, this is something that could be life-saving uh, if you're a long way from home. And so you want to give yourself the best chance to get home. If you don't care about getting home and you want to stay where you are, that works too. But if you have family, uh, guys, you're going to want to get to your family. And the determination is going to be strong. And that's going to be a huge plus in getting you home. Now, one of the first things I would do is get the map uh, of that area that you're going into. Um, obviously, you know, you can get big maps. I mean, this is a big atlas for South Carolina, but you can get maps for the entire country. This is the southeastern United States, and this is uh, North Carolina, Georgia. These are the places that we go quite often. Uh, then here's just a United States atlas with road maps and pretty detailed um, and, you know, here's just a map of the USA. So there's a lot of different choices. Uh, the best place to get these are, you know, truck stops or where they have, you know, big trucks coming in because they typically have these maps. You can order them. Uh, you know, if you really want to get detailed before you plan your trip, you know, you could get a topo map and figure out the terrain and everything else. And, of course, a lot of these have that as well. Uh, so maps, again, you know, your GPS could be out and you need to have a map. But you also need compasses, uh, and having a really good compass is important. These little button compasses are fun, <laughs> but I don't want to depend my life on them. And so I want to have a good compass, whether it's a you know, U.S. military compass or you know any of the really nice compasses. Do your research, find the best compass for you, but you've got to be careful because there's a lot of cheap compasses out there. Also, one thing you may want to look into are map cases, and this keeps that map completely dry. It keeps it out of the elements. It keeps it from getting dirty. You can use dry erase if you want to mark on it, and so I really like to have a map case, and there's a bazillion different types. Uh, these are just surplus map cases I got from Sportsman's Guide, but there's definitely a lot of choices. And guys, that's going to be your roadmap home, so protecting those maps is going to be vital but having them is the first step. Now next is your bag. Uh, you've got to have a sizable bag that's gonna be comfortable to carry long distance. There's a lot of bags out there with thin strips, thin padding, uh, you know, the way they fit on your back, it's not optimal. Uh, if you're gonna be walking a week with a 30 pound pack, you've got to really make sure that you have a good quality pack, you want it to hold up, uh, but also you want to make sure that the harness is friendly to travel. Uh, this is a Mystery Ranch uh, backpack. This is an incredible pack. Uh, but there are so many others out there. So, you know, there's a lot of choices, and we're not getting into specifics, but I, I just really like this Mystery Ranch. Uh, I like these side panels. This keeps it on your back. It keeps it from shifting. This is something that's just, I, I just love that. These shoulder pads are incredibly thick padded. Uh, they had the mesh netting on the back. Uh, it's kind of got the yoke system on here and it's fully adjustable. Uh, it has your sternum strap, has your waist strap. I mean, it's got everything you need. And so, in fact, the waist strap even fits back into this. So, you know, if I want to use it, I can. I can tuck it away if I need to. Making sure, though, that you have that surface that you can, you know, keep yourself cool because your back is going to get hot and this is padded. So a good quality backpack, and if you can get one with a bladder, a water bladder, that makes it great as well. That's just a bonus. Uh, something that has some attachments at the bottom where you can attach a tent or tarp or whatever you need, and plenty of space. You just need the space in the pack. Uh, this one, the way the straps are, it's gonna keep it somewhat water resistant uh, with these zippers, they're covered. And so this pack is made for the outdoors and it's not cheap, but if you need it, this is gonna be worth its weight in gold. So make sure you start out with a very large pack. Right, walking shoes. 
boots, something that you can travel in, something that you've already broken in. Uh, guys, a lot of times, especially during the summertime or you're on vacation, flip-flops, hey dudes, those <laughs> Crocs, you know, you need some good shoes. You can pack those away and have them if you need them. Socks are vital. Uh, you're going to need to change out your socks regularly. Uh, I have just a couple of pair here. They're wool socks, merino wool, but you need a number of pair of socks. You've got to take care of your feet. Guys, I plan all of my preparations around the rule of threes, and that is the time it takes that you can live. So three minutes without air, you can live three hours in harsh conditions, you can live three days without water, you can live three weeks without food. Medical self-defense flow in between. So one of the first things that I want to consider is my shelter. Now, of course, for you know breathing, uh, unless you're going to have some kind of respirator, which is just going to add a lot of extra weight. I like to have a bandana. The bandana can cover my face. Uh, you know, it can keep dust and smoke, debris. It'll just help with that. It's not the end all, but it's definitely something that I can put in the pack. But then I go straight to number three for harsh conditions. Guys, whether it's heat or it's cold, uh, you really need to be able to keep your body at a level temperature. Uh, so this is the middle of July, and of course this could be watched even in the winter time. But you've got to make sure that you're able to at least keep yourself cool or keep yourself warm. Many people die from exposure out in the elements, and so that's one big thing. Now for me, uh, you know, there's a number of different things, and we have them laid out here. Uh, one thing I think that's uh, just an easy one is the SOL Space Bivy. This is really an upgraded space blanket. Uh, it has material around the Mylar, so it has that Mylar to keep you warm, but it will last longer than just those little cheap space blankets. Those things rip in no time. And you really need to have something that will last for a little while. Uh, these kind of fold up really nice. Here's one right here, and this is just the emergency blanket. And it's actually almost like a sleeping bag. You can wrap up in it, as you can see here. I've even done a review on this. And you can crawl into those, and it's a fairly inexpensive way to have some kind of shelter. Uh, now, you'll need some more shelter than just this because it could be raining, the weather could be bad. Uh, you know, a tarp is great. You can use it for so many things. And with the eyelets and with paracord and with your tent stakes, you can set it up. And honestly, the tent stakes are a bonus because you can actually make it out of wood, make your stakes. But you do need some kind of cordage. So this way you can set up a, sh a temporary shelter. You can use your space blanket to keep yourself from, you know, from getting cold because even in the middle of the summer, at night, really late at night, it starts to get really chilly. Uh, and then we have the Wooby. This is something the U.S. military has been using for a long time. It's lightweight, it's compact, it packs down to a very small size. This is actually a poncho liner, so it'll keep you warm, and yet it's very lightweight, and it has that really nice uh, thinsulate in there to keep you warm. Now, tent obviously would be a great option. I'm not big on tents when I'm out, especially if it's any kind of danger. Uh, but a hammock, it works pretty good. So you've got a hammock that'll keep you up off the ground. You can take the tarp and you can cover it with a, make a fly for it. And then you can keep yourself from being on the ground and yet you can be able to see around you. Now also with that, I have a watch cap. Uh, you know, these things are great. And so to keep your head warm, but a big plus is having a, some kind of rain gear. Now here we have just a rain jacket, but rain pants would be great as well. And so if you're not careful, you can get in a downpour and you can really, your temperature can really drop. And so you want to make sure you have a way to keep yourself warm. One thing though I have in here is my fire kit. Uh, one of the things about a fire kit guys, and I have it in one place, I know where my fire tools are and I can just open it up. I've got my ferrocerium rod, I've got matches, I've got big lighters. Uh, these are lifeboat matches and then I have tinder tabs for tinder. Uh, you can also put Vaseline and cotton balls in there and that's great. But having multiple fire starting tools is important because these Bic lighters, fuel lever can get pushed and it'll dump all the fuel out or that little wheel can get corroded. I'm telling you guys, there's been many times where I've tried to use a Bic lighter, which is my favorite and most used way to start a fire. Uh, and so having redundancy and having more items is vital. And keep it in one place, you know where everything is. Uh, this is just one of those pro tips, guys. Having a fire kit is just important because it will boil your water, it'll cook your food, it'll give you light, it'll give you warmth, and it can keep predators at bay. The one downside to a fire is that it can also draw unwanted attention. 
And so that's one thing you need to be careful of is if you're going to make a fire, you've got to make sure that you're in a safe environment because it will be like a beacon of light. Guys, when it comes to fire, it is essential to survival and having a good fire kit and knowing how to use it is vital for survival situations. And Exotac makes the best fire starters on the market. Made in the USA down in Winder, Georgia, using really high grade aluminum, they machine some really beautiful handles, a lot of different features, replaceable ferro rods, and a number of other different fire starting tools. You get 20% off using Suits 20 with the link down below in the description. And a big thank you to Exotac for sponsoring today's video. Video. Water. You can only live three days without water. Now that gives give or take some, but you know the fact is, is after three days your body's going to start to seize up. You're going to get dehydrated, and to be honest, you're not going to be able to carry enough water. So you've got to have a way to filter available water. And I don't care how clean that stream is, they can be contaminated with Cryptosporidium, Giardia, and it'll make you sick if it doesn't kill you. So guys, having a way to filter water. Now the Sawyer Mini, uh, this is a very popular option. It's very small, compact. Uh, I, like, I like this, but I also like the Frontier Filter Straws. This is the Frontier Pro, uh, and it has everything you need to be able to filter water. It can even adapt to your water bladder, and you have extra filters as well. And I believe it'll filter like 22 gallons of water or something like that, and it's just a great way to be able to get water. Um, and we've done reviews on these. We've actually used them in streams. Uh, now, one thing too you can do is use just water purification tablets, and those work good. Uh, the problem with this is, is it doesn't remove the sediment. It doesn't change the taste. <laughs> and it's one of the things about these filters, they will make the water actually taste fine. Uh, but these will make give you a funky taste to it already, but it is going to be drinkable. And you should at least have some of these available, even if you do have the filter. You can boil your water, uh, which will also purify it. Uh, but, you know, just like these uh, water purification tablets, it doesn't remove the sediment and the taste is what it is. But one thing is the seal cock. This is a wrench that actually opens up valves. The actual little grip is removed, uh, especially in cities, because they don't want people just turning the water on. Uh, you can fit this to the valve and be able to turn it on if water is running and you can at least fill up your containers. And having a container is going to be vital. Um, and you know, this is just a hydro flask. One thing I do like to have is one without any plastic here that's all metal. And that way, you know, I can uh, cook on this if I need to. So this just gives me a way to be able to, to carry my water, but it also gives me a way if I need to cook or boil the water. Uh, but there's a number of different type filters and guys these are just really small ones that are chosen just because you need to have something small i love the k9 hiker pro but it's just clunky and going in a pack that i've got to have every available inch i think this is going to be a good choice and guys remember you need at least one gallon of water per day per person but obviously there's military canteens there's a lot of different things you can use for containers uh, i do have a setup where i have a standard military canteen with the canteen cup in the bottom where i can cook with that so again there's a lot of options uh, the grail systems one that's a press system and I like it, but it does take up a little more space. Now, three weeks without food, you've got to have food. And guys, you can't go three weeks without losing a tremendous amount of energy. You need to keep that energy up. You need to keep that morale up. And so having food is a vital part. Uh, it'll keep your mental acuity up. Uh, but definitely, while you can still live a little bit longer than three weeks, uh, you're going to be pretty much useless, especially if you're exerting yourself and you're walking and you're traveling. So we have a number of choices here, and the first is just lifeboat food. Uh, this is excellent. Uh, it's a five-year shelf life. It's vacuum sealed. It will. There's 2,300 calories. Uh, so this gives you quite a bit of calories just for this one small pack. Now, if you think about it, you need a couple of thousand calories per day. So you could have seven of these, but when you start looking at some of these others, like Mountain House, this is 530 calories. Uh, this particular one, this fettuccine Alfredo chicken is 580. So you need four of these to give you 2000 calories. So, you know, you wanna go ahead and plan that out. And then of course you have, you know, your protein bars, things like that uh, with high protein, which makes it nice. But, you know, again, you need those calories. 
uh, guys, to be honest with you, to, to, like just for a week, if you were trying to plan a trip, you're going to have most of your pack filled with food. Uh, so there's going to have to be some other options. And maybe a fishing kit would be great to go in here. Uh, using deadfalls, being, I mean, you're just going to have to be creative. And hopefully you can get someone as you're going along to maybe donate a little food to you. But, you know, that just remains to be seen how things are going to go. Also, having a small little cook stove. Now, again, because having a fire can really draw a lot of attention, having a small stove, uh, you can actually hide behind something and be able to cook. Uh, one problem with that is, is the smell of the food, you know, over a little period of time. But guys, again, you know, those first couple of days, people are going to just be in confusion. Once people start to panic, that's when, you know, you're really going to have to be extra careful. Uh, and then here we have a small pot and you can cook on this. Uh, and it gives you a little more surface to be able to do some things. So, you know, and again, you need to plan it out because this does take up room. Uh, is this going to be necessary? And so figuring out your food, figuring out how many calories you're going to have, and then what are you going to do to supplement? You know, there are possible wild edibles and things like that, but they're low in calories. And so, you know, so one of the things a lot of people are mistaken about is they think they're going to go on the bug out and they're just going to be able to live off the land. But if you've ever watched the show Survivor, you can see that you can go hungry really quickly. And one thing too, you need some kind of utensil. Uh, here we have a couple of sporks. There's a bazillion different type, but these are super lightweight. And so uh, you need to find something. I would choose titanium probably because it's just strong and it's so lightweight. But this little plastic spoon would work well. And we have a little cup where you can cook some food and it has little handles on it. Uh, and again, using a canteen tin, uh, the cup that's underneath, those things work great. Mess kits are great. There's just a lot of options. But guys, you need to really make a plan for what you have and you need to use it and check it out before you take it. I mean, how long does this fuel last? <laughs> how long can you cook with it? And do you have an extra? So little things like that you need to think through. Now medical, definitely, uh, you know, and especially in a grid down situation, there's, you're going to be your own first responder. So you need to make sure you have some things to be able to take care of yourself. And you're out there in the elements, you're vulnerable, and you can really get hurt. Uh, this is a trauma kit, and it has the, the cat tourniquet. It's got compression galls. It's got hemostatic agents to keep, stop the bleeding. Uh, chest seals. It's got a lot of stuff in here. Plus, I've added band-aids and things like that. Some different things that I might need if I'm out there. So the band-aids are going to be probably what you use the most of. Because one of the problems is, and we do have antibiotic ointment in here, but one of the biggest problems with this is that if you get a cut and it gets infected, that becomes life-threatening. And so here, I've just kind of packed some of those things here, and then I've got more of my serious gear right here ready to go. Uh, make sure you have good quality stuff, some nitrile gloves as well. But also wet wipes. And the reason why I have wet wipes is to keep the hygiene up, but also I can use this as toilet paper. Um, you can take a roll of toilet paper and flatten it out and make it small. Uh, but this is going to be great, uh, multi-use. You just want to make sure you have enough. And then just one of those compression towels. These things are great to have because you're going to need to get that sweat off your brow. And of course, the bandana is going to help a lot as well. But as far as other hygiene items, you know, guys, I mean, you could put a small toothbrush in here and honestly, you could fill this thing up with just medical and hygiene. So you've got to pick and choose and decide what you're going to need. Can you go a week without brushing your teeth? I don't know. I mean, do you need soap? I mean, you know, I think we can make it a week. But if that's super important to you, then, you know, there you go. Light. Light is your number one security tool. Uh, really, honestly, you'll need to be traveling some at night. Uh, just keep you at, you know, kind of on the down low, keep people from finding you as well. Uh, and so traveling at night is going to be important. You're going to need flashlights, but here's the problem. Just like with fire, you shine this light and guess what? You know, you're now a beacon. And early on, it's probably not going to be as much of a trouble. You know, people are going to be out and about trying to figure things out. Uh, but once things kind of fall into a panic, then you're going to need to really be careful. But sometimes you're just going to need light. I mean, one of the things I love about some of these lights, this is this little O light. If you press and hold, it is a moonlight setting. And you really can't hardly even see it. But it's there. And it's about one lumen. And so, you know, if you need to conserve your battery on top of that, 
that really helps. Having a headlamp to me is, if I only had one light, it would be a headlamp. And this one I can pull off. Uh, it's one of the things about the Petzels and some of those, I mean, they're dedicated there. So this, you can remove it, you can use it, and it's a little bit more sturdy. Uh, but one problem is if you have an EMP, uh, you know, just like your battery backup. I mean, is this going to work? Are these lights going to work because of the circuitry that's in these? So what I would think would be very smart to do is take some kind of Faraday bag. And of course, this is a smaller one. You can get these on Amazon. Uh, you can put your lights in here, put your charger, put your battery pack. And I can drop all this down in here. Uh, it's because I'm not using them all the time or at least put one in there. And then once I get it and I can seal it, and you're gonna to need to make sure it's big enough because you don't want any seams. This is really not big enough. But once you get everything in there and you close it up, you know, it will protect it. So if an EMP, which is honestly, again, the one thing that I think would warrant what we're even talking about uh, is having some small Faraday bags or little pouches. This is fairly inexpensive. I think they run about 20 bucks. And so this is great insurance to be able to have because let's face it guys, if nobody else has light and you have this and you have light, I mean, that is a huge advantage. And I mean, really this is made for a phone, but how many of us keep uh, our phones in a Faraday bag and then have it out and that's when the EMP would hit. <laughs> now one thing that gets into a little bit more expense, but honestly it would be worth its weight in gold, is night vision. Uh, night vision is gonna give you an easy way to travel at night uh, and of course you could use it sparingly, which you'll need to to save your batteries. Uh, but night vision is going to keep you concealed, it's going to keep you hidden, and yet allow you to observe people, observe other things during the dark. I went to the TNVC Gunfighter 101 class, and one of the things that they said at the beginning is having night vision is a superpower, because not everybody has it. Now there are different styles and different qualities. This is a PVS-14. <laughs> they run close to $3,000. Uh, and, but you can use this as a monocular. You don't have to attach it to a helmet. But then we have just a standard night vision. This is a one leaf. This actually attaches to a rifle. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive. The quality is not up to the PVS-14, but the price is considerably less. And there's other night vision out there. And there's thermal. Thermal's a really good one, but that's even more expensive. So finding some way to be able to have some night vision could really be a great option. One that I'll highly recommend is the Aurora series. Uh, the Auroras are great and they actually uh, record, they have it in color, and if you have an IR light, you can really see in distance. You will need, though, batteries for these. And in an EMP, it may knock these out. And so this would be something excellent to keep in a Faraday bag. Now, as far as self-defense goes, you definitely need some mode of self-defense. You know, the knife is definitely one, but pepper spray, bear spray, uh, you could even encounter some wildlife. And so having some kind of pepper spray uh, is going to be important. Uh, and then, too, it can get you out of a really tough situation. Uh, firearms, obviously, that is the number one choice, but a lot of people watch these videos from all over the world, and, you know, it's just not an option for them, uh, or at least a legal option. Uh, for me, of course, obviously you want to have your concealed carry, you want to have obviously whatever you can have uh, and to be able to get home. One thing about a business trip, if you're flying, uh, typically you can carry a firearm. You can, you can check it and uh, carry the firearm with you and then you would have that when you got ready to leave uh, if you were leaving on foot. So firearms are definitely important. A go-to rifle, I mean, that would be optimum, but you know, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. I mean, for me, on going on vacation, we will have one. But uh, that's just something that, you know, we need to weigh out. And obviously, there's a lot of choices. But definitely take care of the basics with some pepper spray and a good field knife. Now it comes to tools. Uh, your knife is going to be one of your most important tools. Uh, there's so many uses. Man has been using knives since the beginning. Uh, this is just a Gerber. And, you know, it's just a good, solid knife. You want a full tang knife. You want a fixed blade knife and something with a comfortable handle. Uh, one thing I like about this is it has a fire steel locked into a little compartment, and then in the bottom we have a sharpener. And so that just gives it a redundancy uh, that I like, and you know, again, this is just gonna relieve weight. And of course the sheath, it's important to have a good lockable sheath, it kinda has some retention to it. 
Uh, I like the Silky Saw. Uh, this is kind of a bonus, but the Silky Saw can, you know, cut down, you can build a shelter. I mean, it can cut limbs out of the way. Uh, there's just a lot of things about it. Uh, fairly lightweight, but this is just optional. Multi-tool, of course, you know, this is one that has bit drivers, and so that really comes in handy. Uh, are you going to need a multi-tool? You know, that just remains to be seen, but I think having a multi-tool of some sort is going to be vital for those just things that happen that you just never know about. Uh, and then uh, some kind of wire cutter. Now the reason I threw this in is because a lot of times there are obstacles like fences, things like that, that you need to be able to cut through wire. And you want something that's of decent quality. Uh, but wire cutters are one of those vital parts. Uh, a lot of times, especially with special forces, they use these, or military. Uh, because you need to get through certain barriers. Now you don't want to go and deface someone's property, but you know if you're trying to get through a fence and you can't, uh, this is going to be a good option. One thing I think that is just one of those tools that kind of combines is a AK-47 bayonet. Now this one's a rough one. I've got some much better ones. This has the tip broken off. Uh, but the one big plus about an AK-47 bayonet is that I can put it on the sheath and I have a wire cutter. And so that's like two tools in one. Uh, the AK-47 bayonet is one of my favorite tools and you know, they've been proven uh, and they've been through hell and back. So definitely an AK-47 bayonet. If you have an AK-47 with a bayonet lug, then there you go. Now to me, the heavy meal trash bag, this goes in all my bags. These are super heavy meal. Uh, they're contractor bags. I get them at Home Depot and Lowe's. They're just great. They can be used as ground cover. They can be used as a table. You can put it on under you. When you're sleeping, if it's raining, you can put it over you. You can make a shelter. There's a bazillion things. You can even use this to collect water. Uh, we did a video on this and there are so many uses. I highly recommend having these in all your packs. Having a good pair of gloves. You know, you don't want to tear up your hands and you may need gloves. It may be because something's too hot. It may just be something's too rough. Uh, having extra batteries, of course, you know, is a no-brainer. You just need to have some extra batteries. Uh, and you don't have to have a whole lot, but having a few really help. Now, writing something down, and it's important to be able to write things down. In instead of trying to remember them, instead of trying to scratch it with a some kind of tool, is to have a write and a rain pad or one of the field notes. And I like the, space, I like the Fisher Space Pen. Uh, because these write in every direction and this way this can get completely drenched and you will still have the writing on here and it doesn't smear and you can write in the rain. So there are a lot of things that this actually can be used for and it's lightweight and it's easy to pack. Uh, also we had a watch cap but you want to have some kind of ball cap where you can keep the sun off your face. Uh, and two, you know, possibly throwing in some sunscreen because if you're walking for days you're really going to get sunburnt. And so having some kind of cream or something, sun blocker, uh, are going to be important. So guys, a lot of planning, a lot of consideration. I mean, it takes a lot to put this together. And again, you need to craft this to your situation, to your preferences. But first off is make sure that you plan how long it's going to take you, plan your route, make sure you have maps, make sure you have a good bag, and that you do have some supplies. And then when it comes down to it, when you're walking or going, you know, there may be people along the way, you may find things, there may be something that helps you to get through that time that you didn't even plan for. And that's where it just comes in to each individual person. But really, give yourself a fighting chance, have a good idea, make a plan, and then enjoy your vacation, your business trip, or that long haul truck drive, knowing that at least if something happens, you've got a fighting chance. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. Hey guys, we're gonna be showing a lot of gear. And that does not mean that you need to carry all the items that I'm showing. Uh, if you can find better, lighter. And so if something were to happen and he was stuck in Minneapolis, he wants to get home, no matter what. That is his number one objective. And so we're gonna go through a number. Okay, no, no. 